They now seem like something of a relic of a bygone age, but back in the 1990s, so-called lads mags did huge business. Magazines such as FHM, Loaded and Nuts provided a mixture of humour, soft pornography and serious articles, and they sold thousands of copies. But was it fairly harmless fun? Flick Everett used to work for FHM and wrote a piece in the Mail this week voicing her concerns that the creation of lad mag culture led to a generation of toxic misogynists. So joining me to discuss this, I'm delighted to welcome the journalist Martin Daubney, who used to edit Loaded magazine, and the TV personality and broadcaster Precious Muir. <laughs> welcome both. Um, Precious, can I ask you first, what is your take on these lad mags? I mean, I wasn't the target audience, I presume you weren't the target audience, but do you think they I were... I mean, I, I was one of the talents, so obviously I have, like, you know, the perspective of the talent side where I was chosen to do something that I felt at the time was very empowering. I mean, I got a platform where I was able to pose for FHM, Maxim, Playboy. Yes. I mean, those days we didn't have access to Instagram, social media, so we couldn't access those companies. Yes. So the way that we got selected was through an agency process and to be selected it was it was like an accomplishment it was a big goal so and an achievement you, I, I'm very proud of. Did anyone at the time ever say to you you know don't you feel exploited in any way or did you feel that in any way? I mean obviously the industry is full of the Weinsteins and the Jeffrey Epsteins and all of that stuff. I mean we are going to come up against that. This is the entertainment industry. Sure. But at the end of the day you have to kind of navigate and go through the industry as best you can as a talent and try to to keep your morals and respect, self-respect to be able to go through this industry because it is tough. Very it is very tough. So Precious uh, feels that you know it's your choice. You yeah, it was my choice. choice, and I was very proud to do it, and, and I would do it again. And Martin was on the other side because you were, of course, the editor of, of uh, Loaded, Loaded, yeah. Loaded magazine. So yeah. uh, at the time, did you feel the same way that Precious has expressed here that you know this is completely justifiable? This isn't creating a toxic culture. Yeah, if you go back to um, the actual era itself, you know, men were pretty clueless about women and they were they were they, they were, still are yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> but, but they were getting their information about women from the problem pages of women's magazines or like dear deirdre yes. so the men's magazines initially became a sort of haynes manual yes. of how to unpack this confusing thing called the woman that I'd, I'd like to spend a bit more time with and actually flick who i used to commission in fact part of me the toxic patriarch i sent her to miami to interview lenny kravitz i'm Sorry for being so sexist. I mean, that does sound she, like she, she a good great, gig, actually. <laughs> she had a great job. She loved it, and she was a good writer. And she used to write about sex and relationships from a women's perspective mm. to educate young men in how to be better. Yes. And so it wasn't at all misogynistic or but, sexist. But, but, However, well, here we go. the political environment at the time was extremely... Um, toxic against them. Yes. So cancel culture didn't exist until um, 2013 when um, a very powerful group of uh, feminist activists called Loser Lads Mags campaign started um, charging into the AGMs of supermarkets, terrifying advertisers, going to WH Smith, ripping the magazines off. They were really good. They were really good at social media and they scared the pants off of our publishers who, who went into their bunkers and it became a real political thing. David Cameron got involved, yes, I remember. the Prime Minister, then it became part of the, the, the porn matrix. The men's magazines were feeding this toxic online porn, therefore it's just as bad. And I reflected back when I left because I became a dad and I thought, was, was I a part of this? Because my family had been subjected to, to domestic violence and to be accused that my magazine had been feeding that was a terrible thing to well, hear. Can I bring Precious in on this? Yeah. Because is this possible that, you know, that w because the magazine seemed to promote a certain idea of what it means to be a male, right. what it means to be a boy, exactly. and that actually it might have been pushing the more... Uh, let's say, unpleasant aspects of masculinity. Yeah. Do you think that's possible? Well, I feel like if a man is going to be sexed, it doesn't matter how the woman is dressed. I mean, at the end of the day, it's down to the individual man to change how he is and how he perceives women. Women, I'm not going to change who I am to please another man so he can then decide to treat me better. But I should be able to be who I am and men should know how to adjust to that. I shouldn't have to change who I am, stop being beautiful or, or standing in front of a, a, a photographer to take pictures for these magazines magazines because then they will learn how to treat me so that, that doesn't make sense that's an argument for individual agency which i completely support and understand but i suppose the counter argument would be well these magazines were aimed at young men who are still sort of formulating their right. way in the world but this is going to be an evolved it's it, it, it's evolved basically now we've got porn so this has got nothing to do with how things are perceived now things are going to change it's evolved yeah. so now the the difference is we've got the internet mm. so the accessibility of these kind of images will make no sense in a magazine so this 
this will never work now. Yes. But in the past, we never had access to Instagram, as they said, social media. So things have changed. And now I can actually navigate the narrative. As a woman, I can post something on social media, and that is down to me to be in control of the situation. In the past, I was relying on editors like this to make sure that I was in the limelight and actually giving me that element of my career to a further success. There is many women from those magazines that have gone on to amazing careers, yeah, including myself, who's navigated through and not just stayed in that industry. Yes. That was just a platform. That was just a step forward to going where I wanted to go. If so, you allowed your career to take you to somewhere else, that's your choice. So Martin, so you know, I think that's a very compelling argument for the, for the way in which these magazines helped a lot of uh, yeah. people to, 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 to in their yeah. career. I mean, the but can you give us any example of where you think it might have had a toxic impact? Well, in the article that um, you mentioned from Flick Everett, she mentioned that Andrew Tate you know, ma magically was poisoned by men's magazines with no proof whatsoever. I do know that um, Prince Harry was a loaded reader because we had a photograph of him in Afghanistan with loaded in the desert. Well, he's the king of woke now. So it's, it's, it's nonsense, I think, to, to assume that millions upon millions of men consumed a product, but it only poisoned yes, people Yes, but if like you take, I mean, I remember seeing, and I, it was, I wasn't, as I say, the target audience, but seeing Nuts magazine, flicking through Nuts magazine, and it seemed to be just a combination of, of, of naked women, um, explosions, and, and close-up shots of wounds, almost yeah. saying to men, you know, you should be able to look at this broken, this bone sticking out of a footballer's knee, because that'll make you more of a man, and it, fe it felt at the time a bit regressive. It's under it's be true that as the magazines um, moved on, they became reductively more about, you know, the, the whole thing was more birds, less words. It was pictures. It became more like a comic book for masculinity, if you like. Right. Whereas yeah. when we got involved, we actually did like the writing bit. And the readers liked reading the writing bit that we liked as well. But um, an interesting point you made about um, the internet and how it changed everything. After I left Loaded, I made a TV show for Channel 4 called Porn on the Brain. I wanted to look at my magazine's role in this framework of getting young men into porn that the Prime Minister, the Daily Mail, was saying is becoming a real, real problem. It's like it's a gateway. A almost. gateway. Like a, a nursery, you know. Like, 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 like a pathway drug and we interviewed criminal psychologists um, the people working at the Tavistock clinic before it got, got taken over by trans ideology they're actually working with the young men who are being poisoned by porn the men's mags never even featured and when I spoke to anti-porn campaigners who who spent their entire life getting into it because of mm. magazines like Playboy and Hustler. And I said to them, would you change things? They said, we would take back those magazines in a heartbeat if we could unplug the internet. Because that, that's an interesting point, is it, Precious, that you know, now things have changed, like you say. Yeah, they've, they've progressed. They've got access to everything. They have access to everything, and everybody's needs have become even more e extreme. So it's like you know, some of the men who would even see something like vintage FHM and Loaded yes. wouldn't even get the same experience or the same feel as they would back then till now. Things have evolved so badly that people's perception of sex and, and women have gone... Do you, you know, do you take the view, though, that, that the, some of the extreme examples of pornography that even children can access that that I mean, does this, have a damaging this to me is, is is one of the main things that i i'm very very like it, it's something that i've i've always said social media should be only for 18 plus yeah. i believe that it's an adult adult environment and only adults should access it because there's so many things on there that children should not be seeing before the ages that they're they're seeing them. But, but that concern wouldn't be the case with the lads mag but, no. you know. but the lads magazines are sold in stores and they're very high up well back in the day they and were. they weren't you know, it, who's giving them money to buy these magazines? Yeah. It's and, the parents, and, and, and they would never yeah. get them. And, and, and the, the fascinating you know, thing it's about totally that different. Is dead right. After I went around schools around Britain, I spoke to about 45,000 British teenagers about pornography and their role in it, trying to help them to become critical consumers, rather than saying, oh, my God, you're going to be a rapist. Because that's what the Daily Mail was saying. That's what mm. the Prime Minister was saying. That's what the BBC was saying. And getting in there, and I was approached by so many parents after lectures who said, I used to love it with I my boy. I wish they were this passionate about inter the internet. Yeah, but, I wish they were. But, yeah. but right. they used to say, I, I loved it when my, when my boy bought FHM or Loaded because I used to know what he was reading. Right. I, know yeah. what, exactly. I knew where he was going. Yeah. Now I don't know it's where he's going. It's in control a little so bit. I, I said to the feminist critics at the time, you'll miss us when we're gone. <laughs> I think they do.